All right, let's look at the third line of the hand grasping reflex. Okay, so this one we just finished doing figure eights with pinched fingers. And we're gonna finish off going piece, piece. Now you noticed I did a little bit of a roll through. I exaggerated at that time. It could just be piece this way. It could be both at the same time, but it's fun to throw a roll into it to add that little extra bit. From there, we're going to go to three fingers. This one you can add into it if you wish. And then you're going to go fourth finger down, middle finger down, pointer finger down. Okay, so we're going to put those that little sequence together. Now you could be changing directions, you could be expanding and reaching. So you've got a lot that you could play with. So we have piece, piece, there's our three, and we have four, and three, and two, and that gets us to the end of that pattern. Now, if you've been following along, you've done row one, row two, row three. This is a great time to link them all together into one format because a lot of times there's a connection. So the first sequence I gave you has to be able to connect to the second sequence. And the second sequence needs to connect to the third. So you just want to make sure that the transition from one to the next is nice and simple. So for example, this one is coming through like this in the figure eight. And then all of a sudden you go piece on the end of it. And that's your transition into the next part. Okay, you got it. The fourth hand sequence of the hand grasping reflex is a countdown. Starts with the pinky finger. You have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, but that would just be simple counting. You could go boom, 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 boom. Now I led with my right hand and I'm right hand dominant, but you could also lead with the left hand. And if you were left hand dominant, for sure, start with your left side if that's more comfortable. It doesn't matter which way you go. Okay, so if I was to do then my less dominant hand, boom, 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 boom. Now, you could also do it by different kinds of movements. So you might decide to travel one direction. Then you might decide to go boom, boom, bring it in. Now that one, you can see my fingers, but there's the triple, and then it might go to fours, bring it across, and like magic, pop, pop it out on the end. There's lots of ways that you can play choreographically to have the music flow, have the body flow, and to just to create a little pattern that's easy to remember. So you have different ways that you might decide you want to move it. And then you might decide to bring the feathers. <laughs> and you might decide to pop that one on the end. It's always a good one to do because it's five. Okay, that's the sequence for number four. In the last sequence, we were opening up the hand and we finished with the hands open with number five. But now this one is a closing sequence. And so this one, you're gonna pinky finger down, fourth, third, second, thumb. And the thumb's gonna go on the side. Now, my fingers 
have a little glitch here in that pinky will not move without the fourth starting to come down. And I've worked on this a little while, but it still sticks. So I'm trying to fold my pinky down. So if you see my fingers move a different way, that's okay. You do what you need to do. But you can have four fingers and a thumb. Now, that's just stringing it along. But you may decide you want to do something else. So it might be go up. Okay. Sorry, you couldn't see, couldn't see my hands. So bringing that pinky in, go up. I'll just bring my hands down a bit. Scoop with number four. Then you might decide to go here, 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 and bring it in. Okay, so you have lots of ways that you can play with the hands through those sequences. So the sequence before was hands opening. This is hands closing. Hands opening would be how can you let go of things, send things off, finish assignments, hand them in, and how might you bring things towards you that you need and be able to ask for things and to be able to bring them closer to you so that you have availability. So this is a way through the hands that you can accommodate to that. All right, we're to the last hand sequence set. So first one is fingers grasping. So this would be like a bear, claw, okay? So you can have that action, but then we go to the palm grasping. So your fingers go a little bit straighter, if you can see that, and then you have this little scoop in here of the palm, pulling it back, which could be magic. So you could have claw magic. Okay, so that might be an action you want to put into the choreography, is that way. So you have those two. Then you have supination, opening the hands out. I don't know the answer. Pronation, but that's okay. Open, in. Open, in. Twist, 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 twist. And if you end up this way, you have figure eights happening with both hands, and that leads you into some other energy patterning too. Okay, so we have the claw, the palm, and open and close. And that gives you the whole sequence. Then the trick's going to be, can you get from all the way from set one all the way through to the end of set five, and then loop yourself back around to start at the beginning again? And of course, putting it to music. Now the music I chose for this is I like to move it, move it <laughs> from Madagascar, which is I know a remake, but it has a really nice beat to it and it has a wonderful way to move. I'm going to lead you through a little bit of the choreographic components of it in the next video. All right. We're up to the place where we're now going to take those hand sequences <laughs> one section at a time, because I know it's a lot. It's a lot for me, too, just to remember all the patterns. Um, but what I'm going to do is introduce you to the first part of the music, because the Madagascar music has this wonderful beat, which allows you to find the beat of the music in the space. So what I want to do with it is put my hand just on the chest here up at the top by the collarbone, and the other hand on lower dantian, so just below the belly button. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk forward and I'm gonna allow myself to find the beat of the music. And this is a walk forward, and the hands placed where they are is a calming position. So if you're a little bit stressed about how you're gonna do things, this is a nice calming thing to do. You could start ahead of the music, if you needed to relax a little bit because you were worried about being able to remember everything, you could just put your hands here and then take a deep breath in. And you should notice lower belly here moving. It should expand the breath. And because we're standing, you may notice a little bit of tension so you can let it go, but 
just standing and holding. This is a beautiful position to calm the whole system down. You may notice your body, uh, let me think, through the shoulders, a little bit of the spine, lower back. You might notice the lower back uh, relaxes. And then it's like it's uh, a little bit of buoyancy that comes into my knees just by holding this position. So I just breathe. So maybe you're working on something and it's causing a little bit of stress. It's not going the way you wanted it to go. Um, maybe you've been at it for too long. You didn't move every 20 minutes. So you need to feel a little bit of movement, but you just start here and just do some deep breathing. And then if you want to put the music on, then what we're going to do is we're going to walk forward. Now walking forward um, metaphorically can be walking into your future, walking into the possibilities, walking into new ideas, walking into a completed project. So you can find the beat of the music and bring it in. Okay, we actually, with the Madagascar music, only need to do four walks, so it's not very much. Then I added a little bit more of an intricate movement into there, and so you can play with this. So this is stepping forward with one foot, and you're going to go hip forward to that foot, back to the opposite corner, over to the back corner, pick up your knee. So you go forward, back, back, knee, forward, back, back, knee, forward, back, back, knee. Now, when I learned this in jazz many moons ago, we, we referred to it as the chicken walk. So I don't know if it has another name. I've seen it appear at different workshops over the years as I've gone to take different choreographies, but this is a beautiful movement to be able to link it all together. That wasn't beautiful. That just goes to show you even I make a mistake too. Forward, back, back, and up. 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 Okay. Now the up and the forward end up rolling together and you can have some fun choreographically with timing, which is why I was kind of looping it a little bit there because I often will go one, two, three, four, and I loop it together, which means this is on a four, which means this goes now back to a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So what you can do with that is make for very interesting choreography because you're never hitting the one with the same look. It wraps through the timing, and it means it, to the audience, it just has a different accent on it be very interesting to look at. So as far as the Madagascar choreography goes, your hand is going here, you're doing one, two, three, four, and then you go into your chicken walk. You could leave your hands here if you want. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And that's where you'll end up. Now your hands could have come off there and you could have moved them in different ways if you wanted to do that. Now, once you get there, that's kind of like your intro into the music. And then it starts into the very first downbeat of uh, the verses that are gonna happen. And in that, that's when you start to add your hands. Now, every class and every student is going to be different. So if you are leading a group of people, I don't want to choreograph it so it has to land exactly on different beats because things are going to happen for people. And you may find a rhythm within your classroom or within your family or within your buddies where you like to put the moves with the different hand sequences um, on a particular part of the music. So like when this roll comes up, there might be a nice big bang in the music where you go, huh. And so you find that spot and you put it where it feels good. And then maybe, um, you know, the one where you get your fingers together, you're doing the sweep here. You might decide to do eight of them because it fits perfectly with the music, but maybe another time only four. And then you feel like the phrase is ready to change. Boom, boom. And you've got your pointer fingers. So you have the freedom to move this around as you like. But I just wanted to give you the walk-in for your introduction and then you play with how you want to put the sequence together. Okay, 
I want to share with you now the hand grasping reflex. This is something um, that comes from Svetlana Maskatova's MNRI program, um, Maskatova Neuroreflex Integration. And what we're doing is we're following a sequence that the body learned in order to be able to grasp hands, pull things closer, push things away, or holding on to a pen and being able to write or color. This is a really important set of reflexes that if they don't integrate in the order or in the correct kind of way, can create all kinds of little gremlins within the system where people will say, oh, that's just the way that person is. Oh, that's because, and they try to talk it off as something else. And sometimes it's just the simple patterning isn't there and we can reprogram it. So what I have done is I've broken it down into small components. And I'm just gonna share the first set with you. So this is just the first little bit. And I put it into choreographed moves, which will go into music so that it becomes more like a rap piece that is kind of an acceptable way to do exercise without having to think so hard about the patterns. What is important though, is that if you find that there's a problem or a challenge getting from one movement to the next movement, you found where the challenge is. That means spend some time on it. Go from the pattern before to the pattern next. Go two patterns before, two patterns after. And just try to integrate it so it really smooths out. When you have something that doesn't work, that is your signal that you need to spend time with it. It's where you're gonna do your most learning. If everything was easy, it wouldn't mean you would need to do anything because you would already know how. So this is the chance to be able to put it together. So this first sequence, we actually start with the thumb tucked inside the fingers. And I'm going to do it by jumping the feet apart and banging my hands down like they're hitting on a drum. Boom, boom. Okay, so I put my thumbs inside my hands. Boom, boom. So that's the first action. All right, now the second action, the thumbs come outside of the hand to cross across the fingers and to get from here to here, I'm going to roll down to the floor. I'm gonna roll up through my hands and as my hands come up, I'm gonna transition them to finish there. Okay, and that can be a whole body roll on the end. And the last part just gives you that nice little lock into there, okay? So that's the second part. Now we get to here, the next part, the thumbs need to go to the side of the hand. So it's not very far to move from there to there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go boom, boom. And so I've taken my thumbs from here and on each action, I can move them to the top. Okay, you can do that with a transition of weight from one foot to the other foot, or you can just, if it's, if it's enough to think about, you might just wanna go look, look. That's totally fine. And as you get better at it, you might decide to move it with more of the body. <laughs> there you can see mine, mine stayed up, which tells me this one doesn't have as quick a reaction time as the other side. So that might be an area where I might like to go from here and then go boom, boom, and let myself transition a little bit slower. Okay, you notice right there, my thumb did go there when it needed to, and that was a good learning experience for me to be able to know that difference. Okay, so we get to there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the hands down and the thumbs are gonna come out. We bring them together and we're gonna do the shape of a heart all the way around until we bring the hands back together. Okay, so we just came from thumbs up here. Then we're going to fall down into the feet. Thumbs come out all the way around, bring that all the way through and bring that back together. And when you get to the end of that, you're gonna roll up and the hands are gonna be like a 
clock. So it's like the fingers, if you were hanging on a bar, and your thumb was underneath the bar to keep you from falling off, that would be the grip you would have. So you come around, there's the thumbs, and then boom. And you're just gonna roll and lock it when it comes back up. That would be an action you would consider in some of the hip hop language. All right, those are the sequences for the first line of the hand grasping reflex pattern. If you practice it on your own and it feels like it's moving quite slow, I want you to know it was slow for me too. It took me a little bit to put it all together. It takes a little bit to bring that whole body movement in. And eventually, it gets a little bit smoother, a little bit smoother, but it's well worth it because these reflexes are so beautiful when they're set correctly. Okay, enjoy playing with that pattern. Okay, we're ready for the second part of the hand grasping reflex pattern. All right. So we just finished with the hands up like this in the claw. We would roll them, boom, into that position. Now what I want you to do is point to the stars. There's one, there's the other. And you notice what I did. I leaned back and I looked that way, and then I looked the other way. And I could transition, transition from one foot to the other foot. You know, boom, boom. Now you can decide how slow or fast you want to go, how much extra body movement you want in it. But the point is, you have two pointer fingers. Now what's gonna happen is your thumb is going to need to pop out. And I'm gonna do that by turning the wrists and flipping the fingers open. So they end up like this. So I have my pointer fingers and I'm gonna go flip. And then I'm gonna go, hmm, let me think on that. And bring it around, okay? So we've gone from the pointer fingers and flip, squeeze in. That brings you to that spot. Okay. All right, so now from there, your hands go out to do a little pinch. So you're over here and you're gonna go like this, pinch. So that's the thumb and the pointer finger. Put them together and give them a little squeeze. And then we're gonna go back and forth with them just pushing them in and out, kind of like what you would do on a pencil. Ah, 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 ah. Now you could put accents into the music there. You could move it back and forth if you wanted to. Okay, so a couple ways of doing that. And then you go from there to two fingers squeezed onto that thumb. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in a figure eight. We're gonna roll over to the right, Come up the middle, go over to the left, come up the middle, and we create a figure eight pattern. Now, if you want to take it through the feet, you go through, 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 and that will bring that pattern together. And that's part two.